Well, Sajjal Gupta, head of FX and rate seal Y Securities, joins in. Aditi Nair, principal economist of ICRA as well, uh, joins in to talk to us about whether or not uh, this is going to help. Morning, Aditi. Thanks for joining in. Aditi, um, not everyone seems to be convinced that import curbs will help in materially reducing the current account deficit or break the fall on the rupee. And besides, this can prove to be inflationary. What is your sense? Uh, how are you reacting to these measures taken by the government? Thank you. Uh, I would broadly agree with that because the items that have been identified on which these uh, import duties are being filed are actually going to be a pretty small part of our uh, overall import basket, uh, roughly in the range of uh, 12 to uh, 13 billion. And uh, so we impact uh, for the rest of the year for uh, the total import bill is really not going to be very much, even if the import duties are successful in curtailing uh, consumer demand. So uh, while I think uh, the list that has been brought up is certainly um, appropriate in the sense that these really do seem to be mostly uh, non-essential items, we haven't got any fuels or uh, industrial inputs uh, other than uh, ATS which are included in this list. Gold where the fear of smuggling would have been uh, uh, much higher has also been kept out. And uh, so I think it is uh, in terms of what could be targeted, possibly this seems to be a fairly appropriate list. But yes, absolutely I agree that the efficacy of these measures and actually curtailing the size of the climate kind of deficit would at best be limited to a couple of billion dollars of over the rest of the year. So as of now, we are not materially changing our forecast for the current account deficit uh, for SR19. Uh, we maintain that it's going to be around. 27 to 2.8% of uh, GDP. Uh, Aditi, I don't know, I didn't catch your answer whether you uh, sort of gave me that number, but if you were to quantify this for me, how much uh, of an impact uh, are you expecting this to have on the current account deficit? And also, uh, do you think while this may have a sentimentally positive impact, will this, of course, uh, reduce dollar demand and increase dollar supply? Uh, in the long run, because I believe that is where the main problem really lies uh, for the economy. So I don't think that these measures will have more than a few billion dollars of uh, an impact. Uh, you know, I would say under uh, five billion dollars of an impact for the rest of the year. So materially, I don't think this is really going to change either the size of, uh, uh, you know, rather not the size, but the vulnerability that we are associating with uh, the current account deficit. And because the amount is looking like it's going to be quite small, uh, again, it's really not going to have so much of an impact on the dollar uh, uh, demand supply balance uh, as far as the Indian economy is concerned. So not sure how much of an impact it will have on sentiment either. Right. Uh, stay with us, Aditi. We have Anant Narayan as well uh, joining us. Anant, uh, good morning. Overall, currently we are talking uh, about the increased duty which is expected to yield almost around 4,000 crores in terms of revenues. Now, how big an impact, according to you, is this going to have on the current account deficit? And as we know that the step has been taken, uh, you know, in terms of whether the way rupee has depreciated, uh, you, do you think it will help us, you know, curtail this kind of a fall now? Uh, morning, uh, morning, Samina. Look, um, I tend to agree with Aditi. Uh, in terms of actual numbers, the impact is not very large. But I think this has to be seen as a part of a series of steps being taken to shore up short-term confidence uh, and manage uh, the current market conditions. Uh, and within the time that we buy for ourselves using reserves and uh, measures such as these, uh, we try and address the real root causes, which is, you know, making our exports do better, uh, making our domestic production and manufacturing do better. Look, we are in a bit of a bind, uh, and there are no real good choices available here. Um, you know, there, there is a current account deficit problem, which is, uh, you know, completely increased this year. Uh, there is a core outflow uh, across FDI and current account, which uh, is, is close to $50 billion. And therefore, something has to be done to address short-term sentiment and long-term steps. Now, demand destruction, unfortunately, is going to be a part of the short-term steps to be taken. I don't think it stops here. Uh, we'll probably have more to come in. And alongside, we should probably also have an austere fiscal policy and tight monetary policy uh, to reduce our import demand. How do you bring that up, 
uh, Anand, because at the end of the day, we need adjustment on three fronts, right? Monetary, fiscal and exchange rate to, of course, uh, treat the current account deficit problem. Uh, but this is the second round of measures taken by the government. The last time around on 14 September, the government announced measures to track capital flows, including easing of mandatory hedging conditions for infrastructure loans, permitting manufacturing center, uh, sector entities to avail external commercial borrowings, removing exposure limits of 20% on FPIs. Of course, all those measures were undertaken, but it, no it did nothing to help the fall on the currency. We went all the way to levels of 73 in the NDF market as well. Uh, as we look at it this morning, these measures, uh, while uh, coming at a good time, it doesn't seem like it's going to do much to control the fall on the dollar rupee pair, right? So look, I, I would differentiate between the steps taken previously and the steps taken now. Uh, the first set of steps were attempts to get in more money uh, on the capital account, right? Either through domestic uh, participants taking unhedged exposures or, you know, trying to entice uh, FBI to bring in money into uh, masala bonds or into local uh, debt markets. Frankly, that didn't make sense. You know, A, it doesn't address the core issue of, uh, of the current account, which is a real problem. And B, you know, it, it, you know, we already have $400 billion of reserves, so a few dollars here and there really aren't going to uh, make a difference. Plus, it was sending the wrong signal out at a time of, uh, you know, when there is uncertainty. Should you really be appropriately asking domestic participants to take unhedged positions? So I think those steps were kind of inappropriate. This is more directly hitting at the root of the issue, which is the current account deficit. Now, uh, I agree that this by itself is not going to be enough. But alongside the use of reserves, alongside other measures to uh, curtail demand, which will not be popular, by the way, uh, I, I think it can give some relief to the market uh, and ensure that a panic is staved off. Now, all these steps only help us buy time. These measures will not be permanent, hopefully will never be permanent. But within the time that we buy for ourselves using these steps, we still have to address Make in India, Make for India, um, and, and the entire manufacturing issues that we have. Right. Anand, stay with us. We have Sajal Gupta as well, Head FX and Rates at Edelweiss Securities. Uh, welcome to the show, Sajal, and a very good morning. Now, morning, yes, uh, overall, if you go to see with regards to where uh, the entire move in terms of import duty hike is concerned, uh, yes, somewhere we will see a sentimental positive move coming in there. Uh, but do you think uh, the import duty hike on 19 products is something that could rein in the rupee weakness? And overall as well, if you see with regards to the current account deficit, could have an impact uh, because overall the quantum is still less than almost 10 percent of the total imports right now yeah i agree with that it's a small step in the right direction but in terms of numbers if you look at uh, i think this duty would impact imports of around 12 to 14 billion dollars on a totality basis and the impact on cat would be not more than 2 billion or 3 billion maybe in case we are optimistic on this if the total uh, demand gets hit on these uh, 13 billion of items, I think it would not contribute more than 2-3 billion in reduction on the GAD side primarily. So I think it would not uh, move the needle much, but still it's a step in the right direction. I think the government is trying to address the electrical part of it, not the electronics part of it, I think. Because I think electronics is still the major chunk of imports which is hitting us badly on the GAD side. Aditi, uh, this of course is going to have an impact on inflation. We're already grappling with imported inflation on back of rising crude prices. Uh, I know most of us believe a rate hike is around the corner. Gro slowing down growth is probably the best way to deal with it. But are you concerned uh, material impact on inflation could be expected post this import duty hike? Well, I think this import duty hike is only going to worsen uh, the risks which are already there. Uh, you know, I think the bigger issue is the fact uh, that we got this major increase in crude oil prices and the rupee has already weakened uh, so much. So I think those are the core issues. The import duty hike, uh, I think, is only going to be a smaller sort of uh, uh, added irritant uh, uh, for the inflation trajectory on top of the two major global issues that we have uh, in terms of what seeps into our uh, inflation trajectory from crude oil and uh, the rupee. And of course, uh, the lingering concerns that we still have as far as the domestic risks are concerned whether it's uh, the uneven monsoon uh, or uh, the rise in MSPs, the impact of which we're yet to see. Um, and the fiscal risks, uh, which anyways are there from a number of uh, state governments in particular announcing uh, revenue expenditure measures over the course of the year. So in terms of the inflation trajectory, we do think that we'll get one more sub-4% 
uh, kind of a print uh, for demo before we start to see uh, an uptrend through H2 and uh, uh, as of now expecting the Q4 uh, prints to be between 4.6 to 5%. So certainly uh, we are expecting one rate hike with a change in stance in the upcoming policy that would leave the door open for another rate hike if required in the December policy. Anant, uh, we've also got in a good day. Beyond uh, import duties in India, we, uh, we Federal Reserve uh, meet is finally behind us. Uh, I think it was fodder for the doves as well as for the hawks. Uh, on one hand, we got the rate hike, more rate hikes expected, but on the other hand, inflation seems to be contained in the U.S. Do you now get a sense that the dollar is stopping out and it's probably time out uh, uh, to start uh, buying the dollar and selling emerging market currencies? Do you think there's a trade reversal that's finally taking place here? Well, Samina, look, um, the, the Fed policy itself, I guess, was FOMC itself was a, uh, uh, you know, a long expected line. So no real surprises there. So markets are more or less unchanged, including the value of the dollar. Um, I think what's relevant for us is uh, specifically in the Indian context, what this means for us. And there you have to go beyond uh, what's just happening on the, uh, with the Fed. You know, there's a whole bunch of events coming through together, uh, not just global banks, central banks withdrawing liquidity. Uh, oil prices are now moving up beyond 81 now, um, and we still don't know how Iran and trade wars will play out. And plus, we have our domestic uncertainties as well. So yes, while uh, there's no surprises, negative surprises from Fed last night, um, I think the overall context still looks very worrisome. And while we are obsessed about inflation, um, our you know exchange uh, and our external sector, the state of our uh, financial services, banking and NBFCs, and now the state of our credit markets are all cause of concern on the financial stability front. So I think, um, you know, policy making across fiscal, monetary policy and government policy um, has to look at the totality of financial stability. And unfortunately, the choices in front of us aren't, uh, aren't happy. Right. Uh, Sajal, uh, what is your expectation? Where are you anticipating the dollar rupee trade uh, to open this morning? I'm not sure what the NDF market is indicating for now, but the dollar is steady and it seems like there should be some of, uh, bit of a sentimental uptick at least on the rupee this morning. Yeah, clearly in the sense sentiment-wise, uh, rupee would give a positive opening, maybe around 72.40 or something. But I still don't see rupee trading below uh, 72.20 as such for the day. And I think uh, we will find bias at lower end of the range. Primarily because importers are looking at all uh, dips to buy and hedge their regular imports. So I think it would be a very, very temporary relief to the markets. But I think, uh, I think if we can see more such steps coming in as a series, I think that would uh, help in building more confidence in the market. Anant, uh, one last question before we have to wrap up this conversation. There was uh, a whiff a couple of days ago that uh, you know the government would allow Indian oil importers to buy directly from Iran in rupees, uh, buy crude uh, uh, in rupees. Uh, we are on the 27th of September. Month-end uh, crude importer demand is expected to come in over the next day or two. Do you anticipate uh, some big act action coming in from the government for crude importers? And that, of course, could be the big measure we are awaiting. Oh, absolutely, Samina. Look, uh, the fact that we have Iran in November coming up um, and the fact that uh, that will impinge upon both global crude oil prices as well as our own currency markets is uh, clearly a matter of concern. I'm not really sure if a rupee solution will work. We've tried this in the past. Um, it ends up becoming a distortion between two countries, which uh, remains unresolved for a long time. So I'm not sure if this is a permanent solution. Eventually, we might have to shift to buying crude from elsewhere, particularly from Americas, which actually might be cheaper for us if the logistics can be handled out. But I think the broader issue remains, which is uh, it's possible that uh, crude oil will remain on the boil for a while now. And predictably, every analyst is now calling for crude prices to go higher. So, um, uh, you know, it just adds to the overall uh, issues around financial stability that we face uh, and something that we have to manage uh, in vitality. Right. Always uh, great talking to you. Sajjal, Aditi and Anant, of course, uh, pleasure having all of you on the show and helping us understand what this import duty hike could actually mean for the current account deficit. An impact of 10 basis points is what's expected on the CAD. Most believe that these measures undertaken by the government are more long-term in nature and probably will only help the rupee sentimentally but will not help arrest the big decline that the rupee has been witnessing. Uh, this morning, a positive opening on the currency cannot be ruled out, largely because of the Federal Reserve meet that's finally behind us and the fact that these import duty uh, hikes
hikes have been, pre have been introduced. Uh, the SGX Nifty is also indicating to a positive start. So there could be some excitement in early minutes of trade. Three tenths of a percent higher now, 33 points higher is what we're looking at in the first few minutes of trade. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Uh, Mandar, Jay and Gaurav Bissa join on the other side with the top trades. So stay tuned.